Go ahead. Good morning, everyone. It's Heather from Grace on Broadway. My name is Heather Merzigliano, and we have Margaret behind the camera. She's going to be uh, answering your questions, well, asking your questions, then I'm going to answer your questions. Sometimes Margaret answers your questions, especially if they're tricky ones that I don't know. Margaret's pretty smart. Um, today, we are going to announce the winner of our photo inspiration contest that we did last week. So if you guys weren't here, what the heck I'm even talking about is we have this dresser behind me, which was not prepped or primed or ready or anything last week. And I suggested that instead of using one of my friend's pieces for inspiration or just my own head, that you guys would come up with my inspiration for my next project over the next few weeks. So back on my page on Grace on Broadway, I had people watching and they came over and they put, I think we had like 150 or 120 entries or something like that. Um, so everybody put pictures of stuff that inspired them or that they loved or wanted to see me use for inspiration for this piece. The only rules were that it could not be a piece of furniture that either you or someone else has already refinished and it had to be peachy. So any entries that were furniture or that were not PG, I deleted and everybody else liked and loved to vote. So the winner gets to watch me do a dresser with their inspiration, which I think could be kind of fun, right? And they also get a $50 gift certificate to anything Dixie Belle, to Dixie Belle Paint Company. So pretty cool prize. We'll see how this goes, and if it's super fun, maybe we'll do it again. Um, do we have a bunch of people so I can... We do, awesome. yeah. So Everybody's like saying good here. morning. Good yep. morning, everyone. All right, so now that everyone's here, I will let you guys know that the winner is me. No, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Can you imagine how mean that would be if I was like, just kidding? Um, no. So our winner is, well, my win, I am kind of the winner because I get to do it with you guys and that's fun. But our winner is Nancy Greco. And this is the winning picture. And she ended up with 21 votes. So, now, to be fair, all I did was run around and grab paint that kind of sort of reminded me of this picture. So you guys are going to start the process with me right from the beginning, except for prep. So the reason a lot of times I will come on and when we start a piece together, we literally start it together. But the reason I prepped this and Margaret helps me prep it, she actually did most of it because I was running around like a lunatic getting ready for the Bells and Bow Tour, um, is... We didn't know what picture was going to get selected. So I needed to have the piece ready for anything you guys were going to throw at me. And there was a lot that needed to be done with this piece that needed fixing and work before. So what did we do to this piece up until now? Is it got cleaned with white lightning. Then it got wiped back with clear water. Then there was veneer that was chipping up and, and being gross, so that got all chipped up and pulled off. Then Dixie Belt mud got put on to fix it. And then we covered it with slick stick because it was a super slick kind of surface that doesn't always like to grab paint and it likes to be finicky. And we just decided to err on the side of caution and just put a quick coat of slick stick on it. There's yeah. some boss in there too. And boss? It's like every other drawer. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Because we, where all the veneer was yes, gone. Yes, where all the veneer mm -hmm. was gone, we were worried that the Yeah, would, something would bleed would through. Yeah. So this is boss. This is slick stick. We peeled up veneer. There's there's actually probably... It's an even mix. It, yeah. Yeah. There's actually probably five or six live videos of training underneath this. <laughs> but we wanted to skip ahead and get to the good stuff. So just know that it, it didn't magically turn out like this. There was a bunch of work all week to get it there. And we can thank Margaret this week for doing all that for us. Because Margaret does a whole bunch more than just work the camera. She helps me all the time here. So, now that that's done, let's see what colors I pulled out. So, 
Here's our flamingo. Can we like see it against my bright mm -hmm. pants? Maybe I'll do like that so we can see it better. <laughs> no, it's good. It's not clashing with no. my crazy flowers. Mm -mm. So my obvious first choice, I pulled flamingo because it's a flamingo. So right, that's where you start. But then I usually use apricot with flamingo. But this is turning into like a peachier flamingo and this is more of a pink flamingo. So I also pulled out peony and I pulled out pink champagne, soft pink, but I don't care for soft pink with this one. So here's pink champagne and then here's fluff and then black because his his little beak right here has got black in it. So I think these are the the colors I'm going to attempt to incorporate somehow. Um, I feel like metallics would be fun. And at first I thought I liked gold with this. But now I don't. And then I always think about silver. And like maybe I'm on the fence with the silver. Not I don't know, but I really like rosé, and I think Margaret and I were discussing mixing peony with flamingo, but now I'm kind of thinking if I do flamingo and then maybe put rosé over it, it'll do the trick in some spots. So I don't know. These are the colors I think we're going to play with. This is not going to be a one-week project to be like super clear. It's probably gonna be like two or three weeks from start to finish. Um, and maybe we'll do some other stuff in between. So these are our colors. Should I like move them forward so everyone can see better? All right. I'll turn them around too. No, no, wait, I'm gonna hop down. Just to show everybody. Yeah, because um, now I feel super awkward. Now you're awkward? Yeah. You went from That's better. to awkward? There we go. So these are the ones we're going to play with. And here is our picture. Yay. Okay. I brought a whole mess of brushes out and have my whole cart. Oh, the phone. Always. I'm sorry. Whoever was just number. calling. Oh, was it a real person? I don't think so. Because it wasn't any name that was, it wasn't even a name. It was a town. Oh. Oh, look. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So you never know what I have in my cart. These are our carts where we put the stuff we're working on so that um, we don't have to keep running back to our stock. So this shelf is for a project that's over there that you guys can't see yet. It's almost done. And then this will be the shelf for this one. That's how we stay organized. But look, we have mica flakes that might work. These are my new favorite thing. We used them on the last inspiration piece, but all those would totally work for a flamingo, right? All right, we'll keep these on our cart too. I have my Mr. Bottle, have a paper towel. I have like 900 paintbrushes, so let's get started. I feel like we're talking so much today, but we have to do this together because that's what we promised to do. And I think a whole bunch. Oh, there's my bucket of water. Now, hmm. Ani says that she's so happy she's not the only one whose paintbrush handles look like they've been to battle. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, that probably wasn't nice. I should say gosh, but yeah, look at that. Ah! This one's actually really pretty. Look at all the colors. They could be like pieces of art themselves at some point. <laughs> That's why I wear these crazy bright pants, because then you can't see all the paint that's hidden in them. <laughs> so I think we're just going to start with Flamingo. Oh, you should show them our carpet. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I'm sure they saw it by now. Flamingo. From where I was before. <laughs> oh, yeah, they saw the whole carpet with, like, Probably. every color under the sun yeah. in it. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. 
Uh, we're gonna have to I was going to say, just be careful trying to get them back out because the holes are all puttied too. Because what? The holes are all puttied, so we can't use a screwdriver. Okay, we're going to have to mess with this. <laughs> it's going to be tricky getting the drawers in and out if they're already closed. Nancy would like to know if she needs to contact Dixie Bell for the prize. Um, yes. And I'm sure at some point since Dixie Bell is on, they'll probably pop in and... Do these come out? They do. They do. Oh, it just doesn't want to because it's big. Okay. Yeah. I'm just going to take this one out of my way. Mm-hmm. For now. Makes sense. It wasn't cooperating. Yeah, that's scary. Yeah, it was kind of ridiculous trying to get it back out once I popped them in. I know. <laughs> oh, guys, don't. There was some so, wrestling. The hardware, and now we got rid of it and we, like five minutes before we went live, and now I'm realizing we should have kept it just to show you. It was, if you look at the original picture, all of the hardware was broken and clearly has to be replaced. But when I measured it, the reason this piece is even still around is I love the piece itself, but the hardware, the holes are here and here. And sometimes when you get vintage furniture, your hardware is really odd spacing because it's a vintage piece. So it's for vintage hardware and it's not gonna work. So we had to fill in all the holes with mud so that once we're done painting it, we're gonna drill new holes for the new hardware. So that's why we're discussing being careful was closing it because there's no real good way to get it back open. So Rashika was just, I think maybe she tuned in a little late. She wanted to know what you would do first, clean with white lightning and then sand or first sand, then clean. So I'm guessing like either with this or just so like in general scuff. or. Um, well, some people do like a, a scuffing. Yeah. And I think like even after you sand, you have to wipe it, wipe it down a bit, you know? Yeah. Um, we clean, and then, this is so big. Here, I'll just come over here so you can move just wherever you want. Me. Okay. I guess it's personal preference, and it's also um, really what you're doing to the piece and what color it's going to be. But we clean first, always. I think it's easier to clean first even before you sand because if there's disgustingness on your piece and then you sand it, you're going to get um, all of that on your sandpaper or on your sander and it's just going to gunk up. So I think it's easier to always start with something clean. I don't normally do big pieces like this live with you guys. Mostly because they're huge. So you're going to get to watch me climb around like a monkey child and get paint all over myself, I'm sure. So as you can see, when I do a top, I like to get the paint on and then I always go back to the starting point and pull my paint all the way down to keep my lines nice and even. And this is the flamingo that you're using yes. first, right? This is okay. the flamingo we're doing. Today we're probably going to get through most of our first coat, I would guess. So we only have like 45 minutes together. And now we only have like half an hour of that left because we had to go over the winner and the colors, which are super important. So we can at least get some color going. My eyes are playing tricks on me this morning. guys I make a mess I 
I think I want the background of this to be an ombre with all those colors. That seems to be my favorite. I've used a bunch of these in an ombre before, so in my mind, I kind of already know how it's going to play out a little bit. And it just seems like a good goal. So I'm just kind of almost dry brushing here because I like how some of the white is peeking out and I want that to stay. So that's the reason I'm not all the way saturating it or even really going back in for more paint because I kind of like that white peeking out. I don't know what that's ultimately going to turn into or what we're going to put over this color, but I do like that some of the white peeks out. So Nancy's asking, was this brown and put white coat? So I think like the dresser was brown. Just the like dresser a brown wood. itself yeah. was, yeah, it was wood. And then this white color here is either boss or slipstick, depending on the drawer. Yeah, that one's boss. This one is boss. Yeah, because that was the one that the whole veneer had to come off. Yeah. So this one, we did boss it. Normally I like to do this stuff with the drawers all the way in place. But because we had to take the hardware completely off, it's going to be a smidge tricky. Good, a first coat of flamingo. Melissa would like to know what the difference is between boss and slick stick. Sure. So, boss blocks odor, stains, and stops bleed through. So, this drawer that I'm working on now had a shiny veneer on top. The whole dresser did. But it was pulling up. So we had to remove the veneer literally on the entire piece. So we were left with um, just an open, porous surface. And we didn't know what kind of chemicals were used in it or, or any of that. And we figured there was probably a good chance it was going to bleed or just do something funky. So we decided to use Boss on this one. The rest of the dresser, we used Slick Stick, and now Slick Stick um, is for slick surfaces. It gives adhesion. So when you think about uh, glass, uh, Vermica, linoleum, some of the veneer, I don't, typically you will, you don't often see me use both or even sometimes either or on a piece. They're definitely problem solvers. This piece just happened to have a lot of problems and it was around the store. The truth behind this piece is there was a, I went with my husband to a sale at this guy's house and this whole set was there and I was like, it's beautiful. I have to have it. And my husband was like, no, you don't. And he left and we didn't buy it. And we got in the car and we got like two blocks away. And I'm like, what are you doing? I wanted that. And he told the guy I didn't want it. And we got in this argument over it. Not a fight, definitely argument. Because I was like, I definitely wanted that piece. And you told that man I didn't want it. And that's a lie. And I want that piece. And it's going to be amazing. So he was like, fine. And he put the car and we went in a U-turn. We went back to the guy's house. And I made him buy the pieces for me. And then they've been here for like six months because there was such a it project was like to April, it. April, yeah. they came here. Because <laughs> then, of course, I went to start doing it, and it needed the veneer pulled off, and it needed it like, the handles oh. fixed. And I was like, oh, now it's a project, so I didn't want to do it. So then last week, he brought me all new furniture, and he's like, oh, what a surprise. The pieces you had to have are still here. 
So I said, you know what? That's the next one we're gonna do. So that's how come this one is next up. And it did have more issues than something I would normally pick. Normally, he is right. I wouldn't even be bothered with stuff that needed this much. But everything can eventually be rescued and we're gonna prove him wrong. And we're gonna make this thing so stinking cute and it's gonna be awesome. So it's gonna be a super stinking cute flamingo and I'll show him that even project pieces can be beautiful. So that is the super truth behind the story of how we got this one. But it did need a lot. The holes have been filled, which is why the drawers are a little bit hard to maneuver because we don't have the hardware on it yet or even a hole to shove a screwdriver into. Um, the veneer had to come off. It had to get peeled off. We had to use uh, Dixie Bell mud. We had to use slick stick. We had to use boss. Like this is definitely more than your average piece or at least more than I try to use on my average piece. <laughs> but we can't let him be right. Betty said, but it is a nice piece. It yes, is. it is, it is. It is, and it's gonna be awesome. All right. So looking at my colors. I'm torn. All right, we're going to go to apricot. So sometimes, especially if you haven't necessarily ombre before, part of what I try to do is look at the tone of the colors and pick colors where the tones work together. That's how I do it. I like a more natural uh, flow from one color to another. You can do it like wildly different colors for sure, but a lot of times I like the tones to work together. So if you can see these two, their tones work well. Um, and then I'm gonna end up doing a three color ombre and then we'll put whatever on top. And we have three drawers, right? So why make it super hard on yourself? I'm gonna show you how to do a, a simple basic ombre that way. Where we're gonna start our transition line in here and then let the drawer kind of be our absolute transition. So that being said, I'm sorry I have my back to you guys a lot today. It's just such a big piece that it's it kind of requires me to sit this way. This drawer is so weird because if we take it out, you and paint it here, once we close it, you don't see it's that. It's covered, yeah. So it is a little, I'm just looking at it to kind of see where my paint line is going to be. Okay, I got it. I'm also letting my caffeine kick in for the morning. So, Pam and Tia say hi. Hi girls. So I'm actually going to be teaching ombre at the Bells and Bows Tour. If you guys have not heard about it, we are gonna be in Edison, New Jersey on November 3rd. I'm gonna be there with a whole bunch of my friends. It is getting here rapidly. And we have really great sponsors and you get to learn everything super hands-on. And you get to hang out with us. And I think we're a bunch of fun. We're probably gonna go back over and make these a different color, but I'm just gonna put some flamingo there anyway. Betty would like to know if you're gonna highlight the details. Yeah, uh-huh. But right now, I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and make a first coat of stuff and just get some colors down. And then for sure, that's probably also going to be where some of our metallics come into play or some gilding waxes, but I'm going to do that last. And I actually, on the piece that's behind Margaret, that's a super secret that you guys are going to see soon. I'm about to crawl in it so that I can get a little further away from you. <laughs> so I feel like I'm like right up in you. Me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that piece, I 
actually got in the details with some dark waxes and stuff and it worked out pretty cool so we'll probably do that here too so I can show you guys that all right so now I have a wet coat of flamingo over this whole section and I'm gonna grab a new brush oh Kristen says your leggings are inspiring her oh thanks that's sweet they're fun So now I have apricot. Is it? Do you say apricot or apricot, Margaret? I feel I like say it's apricot. Those words. You say apricot. Mm-hmm. So am I weird when I say apricot? Mm-mm. Could it be apricot? All right. Everybody says things different. Like tomato and tomato. Well, like you say peony, I yeah. say peony. Oh, you do. It's just yeah. Just different emphasis on different you know it's not different right or wrong yeah it's not right or wrong just different but aren't there certain words that like have definite pronunciations well you know like resume and resume right. they're in totally different meanings spelled exactly the same i think they are okay so guys so basically for this part just to get it to blend in nice all i did was while the flamingo was wet I took almost a dry brush of the apricot, or apricot, depending on how you <laughs> want to say it. Tia says it both ways. <laughs> depending on the context, I like that. Yeah. And I just pulled like a dry brushing of it kind of through my flamingo. So there's kind of different. And then these, we're going to keep highlighting them because I think that'll be pretty. So here's like more see it'll start to that'll start to pop up and come to life that'd be pretty okay so now this one we're gonna do a base coat of all apricot my brush still has some flamingo in it i'm not really worried about it it'll work itself out as we paint and honestly we're using all the colors so if it actually showed up it's okay too it's still in our overall color scheme. I realize I tend to back brush more when we use slick stick or box, and I don't know if it's, it's definitely not necessary. It's just how I paint because I see the white. And I think it's brighter than wood. But always go back to here and pull your line all the way out. Especially if you're having a day of bad habit back brushing like I was just doing. What is back brushing? Back brushing is when you paint this way and then go backwards. You want to always try and keep your line straight. And the way I try to explain it to people, it helps with like your paint lines, it helps with your paint going on too thick and all that kind of stuff, is did you guys ever see like, it just moves the paint fibers different. So there's, you know those like sequin pillows that came out recently where if you smush them this way, they're all black. And then when you smush them this way, they're blue. And, but when you go backwards, they're kind of stand up on end to make them that color. That's essentially what you're doing to your paint when you back brush, is you're making your paint fibers go a different way. And that's how come you might see extra paint lines or you might have like a little bit thicker in one spot. So I definitely try not to do that. And if I do do it, that's why I go back and pull my line straight. That works when you're painting walls too. Really anything that you want nice and even. And also finish a whole section before you get up. Like let's say all of a sudden I had like the phone rang and I was getting ready to leave or something happened. You don't want to stop here because this is all going to dry and then tomorrow when you go to paint you're going to have 
layers and you're going to see that and it's going to be a mess. So you want to make sure you start and finish a full section before quitting for the moment or the day. So I work in smaller sections so that should that happen, I can stop. So now if someone walked in, I would just say, can you give me two seconds? I just want to finish this drawer. And I would assume that they would be kind, understanding customers and they would wait two seconds. Okay. So, I think I want in here just a smidge lighter. And this is where that drawer being weird when we were looking at it before kind of comes into play because I didn't, you have to see where it's going to hit. So sometimes it's easier doing this stuff with it together. This is still, I didn't get any new paint on. I'm not putting any new paint on my flamingo. I'm just dry brushing the colors a bit to get what I want. And to kind of even up where we're at. There, that looks like a better transition to me. How's it look from your spot, Margaret? Looks nice. Good. So, thank you. so now we want to make sure that this matches. At least I do. So I'm going to go and do our side strips. So I'm going to go just to here. And then I'm going to go into here. And just pull this color down. So that we're transitioning all together. I'm going to pop over to that side and get that one done. I'm going to scooch over. Oh my goodness. We have those little rolly cart seats, but I feel like I'd be trouble on one of those because I would act like a child and I would get hurt. We'd have like little cart races going on or something ridiculous because that's just what we do. So again, teeny tiny bit of flamingo. We're going to come in a little bit above where we want to be to let those colors mix up. Oh, I'll fix that. And we're going to pull our color down. If you goof, no big deal. I'm gonna add a little bit more flamingo up here. And then I'm just gonna paint that right over. Ta-da! No need to be scared of paint. Because you can always fix it. Okay. So now I wonder. I was going to go and just do three colors in my head and go from this to fluff. But now looking at it, I feel like it would be like super stark. So I think, and if you look at our flamingo, there's more of a light pink than a white. So I think I'm going to do pink champagne here and then fluff. So... Right now, I'm just thinking about our transition line or if just painting that one in soft pink will kind of work 
because it's going to abruptly stop here. So I might have to go back in and do some transition work next week once I can get them open. But for now, we'll paint that one pink champagne. Champagne is a really soft, like barely pink. It's pretty. All right. So, it'll work. I didn't want it like too pink, and I wanted to make sure that the colors and the tones went okay together. Start on that side because I started this backwards because I was being too nosy and wanted to see what the color would look like. And this is just the first coat of all of these colors. We're going to end up going in and adding a second coat. We also have to decide what color tone for the hardware we want. Because I should be looking at that and ordering that so that it comes in. I use D. Lawless for my hardware. He's amazing. And he's one of our sponsors. And he's super nice and it was just his birthday. So I'm going to want to go on his site and figure out what we want to do here. There we go. Nice straight line from start to finish. see how those colors are going to go together a little bit better. But let's move on and get, we'll let that dry. And we'll add that to our sides here. And then We'll do our foot. Oh my goodness, I'm running out of time. I think we're up. So while I'm quick doing this and just getting to the fluff, the fluff's gonna be wide. Um, does anyone have any questions? I didn't realize it got so late of this process or the Dixie Belle paint or any of that. And then we're gonna resume next Tuesday at 9 a.m. But if any of you have any questions or about the Bells and Bow Tour, now is your time to shine. We have like five minutes for questions. It's too bright. be a pretty transition and then I'm gonna do fluff on the bottom all right so no questions today no or? not at the moment not at the moment all right so if you guys want to follow me I'm over at Grace on Broadway if you want to learn more about the tour it's the Bells and Bow Tour there's a free group where we go over everything tour related and that is in Edison New Jersey on November 3rd and it's also in Conyers, Georgia, which is near Atlanta on uh, January 18th. Tickets are on sale for both. We would love to see you guys there. But for now, my time on Dixie Bell's page is over and we will see you next Tuesday. All right, bye guys.